Another aspect of what makes this concert special, I think, is the music itself, of course. And over the past three concerts this season, we have featured music from the great musical capitals of the world, including Vienna and Venice and Milan and St. Petersburg. And today we will be adding two more great musical capitals to that list, Paris and Ridgewood. <laughs> that always gets a laugh, but you may not know that while you have been standing blithely in line at the stop and shop, staring slack-jawed at your smartphones, you have been literally rubbing shoulders with two of the most acclaimed composers of our time, Melinda Wagner and Gilad Cohen. And I will invite them up here a little bit later so that you can meet them and they can tell us a little bit about the pieces that we will be hearing. <laughs> I first met Gilad here. Gilad is a resident of Ridgewood. He comes originally from Israel and his wife, Aaron, and he have come to a number of our concerts and a couple of seasons ago they came up to say hello afterwards and we started talking and I quickly became aware of the fact that this guy knew more about music than I did. And I asked him who he was and he has a PhD from Princeton in composition and he won a very large prize in Israel called the Israeli Prime Minister's Award for Composers and this last year he, he won the Barlow Prize which is a very coveted prize for composers here in the United States. And Gilad has an unusual background for a classical music composer, and I just thought I would invite you to tell us a bit about your own background. Sure thing. So I grew up playing classical piano, like many people, but at the same time, I listened to a lot of pop and rock music. Again, not very unusual these days. Most composers, many composers in my generation uh, come and combine these, these styles. and. I want to say that growing up in Israel, I also listened to a lot of klezmer, but this will be a lie. I, <laughs> I discovered klezmer and Jewish music coming to the US and playing in synagogues here. So the mix of Jewish music and popular music, pop and rock, uh, mainly uh, with classical music, uh, together uh, affected my musical style. Well, I think you'll hear all of these diverse influences in this piece, and I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about the various influences that you've woven into the fabric of this trio. Right, so the reason I think there are diverse styles in the piece does come from the instrumentation itself. So the clarinet immediately, I told myself it would be nice to get some klezmer sounds into it. And with the harp, it's such an interesting instrument. It always brings to mind this specific color, a lot of glissando, something very gentle. And I knew I wanted to try something different. And I told myself, Let's see if I can make the harp rock, and if I can make the harp sounds like a drum set. So I thought that would be as far as you can go. So that was the second musical uh, influence. And there's even a small quote from a Pink Floyd song there <laughs> hiding in the middle. Um, and likewise with the cello, you know, I don't know what your association is when you think about a cello, but when I think about a cello, I immediately it just it brings to mind electric guitar immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and same thing, I just, th there's a section in the middle where I really try to create a progressive rock texture in which, in which the bass clarinet provides this bass line, passacaglia, if you will, but in a very rocky way, repeated bass line. The harp provides the accompaniment, the rhythm section, and the cello is the soaring electric guitar hovering on top of all of this. Well, picking up on that, the... Uh this, these instruments are probably as diverse an ensemble that you could come up with. I mean, you've got one that you blow into, and one that you bow across, and one that you, that you pluck. Um, and of course, these are classically trained musicians who have spent their lives learning how to make beautiful sounds. Uh, and you are very consciously pushing them beyond their, their comfort zones. What is that like to approach ensembles that play this and to ask musicians to go off and make noises which are not conventionally beautiful sounds? It's very interesting indeed. Um, the, the, the first thing usually is just tell them, stop trying to play so pretty, you know? Mm -hmm. it's Pretty is not what we're looking for here. And especially because electric guitar, especially with effects like distortion, overdrive, these sounds create so much noise that in order to achieve it with acoustic instruments, you really have to play 
ugly. And, right, and I was talking with Jerry Grossman. He said this is the first time he's had to play his cello up to 11. For, the <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who remember what that means. Exactly, yeah. Um, and the final thing I wanted to ask you, you know, we have a rather diverse audience here. We have uh, many people who come to classical chamber music concerts and are classical music aficionados, and they don't really, you know, they're, they're thinking to themselves, uh, Pink Floyd, you know, was is das, <laughs> Pink Floyd. Um, and yet there are also, he teaches up at Ramapo College, and he has students who are here who are, he tells me, are at their first classical music concert. And of course, we have children here who are the best among us because they haven't learned yet to divide music into what they like and what they don't like. It's all music. And I wondered if you had any thoughts about opening one's ears and opening one's mind to unusual sounds or new sounds as a sort of way of paving the way to hear this piece. As a composer, it's definitely my, my goal. I would love the music, my music to be approachable by people no matter what style they used to listen to. But I would say that actually as a professor at Ramapo, I discovered the most that music is music. Because I've been coming from a background as a concert composer that also plays and writes rock music. But some of my students bring to me music that is electronic music and beat and dance music, things that for me was quite far. And after a while coaching them, I realized music is music. And if I want to add a French horn to sustain the line, I can also add a synthesizer doing the same thing. And if I want to groove, I can get a groove from the harp or from a drum set or from an electronic beat. So at the end of the world, it's really, the, the aesthetics might be different, but the basic foundations, principles of music work the same, I believe. Well, thank you for this conversation and uh, look forward to hearing the piece. Thank you.